In SOLIDWORKS PDM 2019, we also have the ability to set up what's called conditional notifications. Now, we've always had notifications in the workflow, but in the past, what happened was we would notify a group of users, and we had the ability to dynamically select that group of users, but we often had notifications going to people who didn't really need them. Uh, in 2019, we've addressed that by bringing up what's called a conditional notification. Now, the way this works in this example here is manager one will be notified if a workflow uh, notification condition is met. And in this example here, if the file is a purchased file and the variable part type is set to purchased, then manager one will get a notification. If, however, the file going through the transition is not a purchased file, then manager one does not get a notification and manager two does instead. And uh, I've set this one up based on a dropdown in the data card. So based on what's picked in the data card right here, this will set the variable for part type and that in turn will determine who gets the notification when the file transitions through the workflow. Now this is really good because what this means is only the people who need to be notified will be notified. It's also going to reduce the need for complex workflows with multiple transitions. Another nice enhancement is the ability to select drawings for uh, during state change, but exclude reference files such as part files. Um, this is a, a user setting in the reference dialog. There used to be just one checkbox which basically marked all references or unmarked all references during state change. Now we can separate the two between child and uh, drawing nodes. The way this works now is if you were to take an assembly and uh, move this through the workflow, then with the setting that I currently have, I'm able to just include the drawing along with the assembly but not bring the part files along with it. So uh, that's just going to make it a little bit easier when we're, we're actually uh, transitioning files through the workflow. Another nice feature in SOLIDWORKS PDM 2019 is mixed node authentication. Uh, and what that means is if you have the need to add users to your PDM system, in 2019 you now have the ability to bring in Windows users as well as create just SOLIDWORKS PDM users. So you could have a combination of both. So if you just need to add a PDM user, you just simply click on the add user box and simply type in the name of that person. They would be added to your list of users in PDM. Um, if you need to add a Windows user from your Active Directory, you'd simply click on list Windows users and that would go to whichever group you've got set up for PDM and you could simply check the name of that person. So the nice thing about this is it now gives us the ability to add PDM users that are not part of the Active Directory. Um, this is going to be useful if you have short-term contractors or if you just simply want to grant vendor access to your PDM vault. In 2019, your PDM administrator can take care of this and uh, there's no need now to go to IT and have them add the user to Active Directory. One of my favorite new tools in SOLIDWORKS PDM 2019 is the addition of the sheet metal flat patterns that can be generated in the SOLIDWORKS PDM tasks. As you can see in 2019, we can now use the task to actually generate the flat patterns of any sheet metal uh, parts that are pushed through our workflow. As you, uh, as you would expect, this can be done as a right mouse menu and it can also be in a transition through the workflow. What that does now is it gives us the ability to push our files through the approval process and then automatically generate those DXF flat patterns. Nice thing about this is it's going to save us a lot of time. We're not going to have to manually create those anymore. And it's going to simplify our integration with uh, downstream operations. In SOLIDWORKS PDM 2019, we now have the ability to specify within our transitions in the workflow which transitions need state change comments and which ones don't. So through your approval process, there are some transitions where you're simply moving a file from one stage to another, um, such as this example here. The, uh, <clears throat> the file can be moved from uh, under editing to 3D printing. I don't necessarily need a comment when that, when that uh, transition takes place. 
However, if a new revision is required for a file, I do want to know why the file has been moved from approved back to under editing. So for just that specific transition there, I can force the users to add state change comments. So the nice thing about this in 2019 is we have the ability now to separate our transitions and only force transition comments at the critical stages in our workflows and our approval processes.